Yeah. Um, this one should work. This? Uh, this is backwards, and that's forwards. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. First of all, just to acknowledge the great, the subway greats here today, both living and passed away very sh shortly, Massimo Vignelli. Um, I'm in awe of all of them, and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, unlike some of the other gentlemen, I'm a designer. I always was a designer, but it was a brilliant thing. Whoever said a show of hands for who uh, uses, you know, uses a subway map? As a New Yorker, I never used the subway map unless I was going to someplace in Jackson Heights or wherever that wasn't my usual route. Um, it was really an out-of-town client who was very well-traveled who told me that he was intimidated by the subway. And as a designer, it made me really look at the map and remember my experience when I was a student for a semester in London and the great underground map that got me around. So, um, <laughs> so there's really, I'm not gonna really talk about 50 years. I was gonna put a Jetsons uh, image here for 50 years what the transit's gonna look like, but there are some very serious challenges to mapping uh, in the future, and that is, um, up until now, we're just talking about 20th century technology. We're talking about one layer maps that were originally uh, conceived for paper and now have been repurposed for um, personal devices. And they're extremely limiting. And um, I intend to show you what we look at as the challenges. First of all, Google, Apple, MapQuest, they've for a number of years have developed a universal street map system. In other words, I could be in Tokyo, I could be in Berlin, I could be in New York, and I could be new to those cities. I open up my Google Maps, now the names of the streets are gonna be different, but the user interface is gonna be the same. It makes me comfortable, it makes me empowered that I can do this, I can get around this city. So, I'm just giving four examples of cities, and this is the uh, Google Maps of those cities. And um, it's a consistent user interface. As I said, it's very empowering. <laughs> but when you look at the transit maps of these cities, they're all over the place. They're very um, localized. They're, um, if I'm going from Washington to New York, um, it's a whole different vocabulary to learn. And it's an intimidating vocabulary to learn when you're going underground. There's no landmarks to guide your way, just hopefully great signage. So the whole idea is we don't want to do this. We want to make a universal there we go, transit system where if I'm in these four cities, the user interface is the same. Now, it doesn't mean that the cities are the same or that it's a homogenous experience. We don't want homogenous, homogenous experiences. We're big fans of cities, the actual fabric of the city. It's more than just a diagram. It's more than just getting from point A to point B. I couldn't help but think about the era that some of these diagram maps came from 64 through 72. It was the era of Robert Moses, like point A to point B, ram a highway through, ram some, but there's a city to consider, and there's neighborhoods to consider, and the fabric of the city, I think, is very important. The question is, can both easeability and use and um, keeping the essence of a city be intact? The second challenge is, what style of map? And we heard over and over again that there's this big controversy. And as a designer, about 10 years ago when I started on this, I love controversy. I want to hear two of the most opposite human beings in the world. And I couldn't think of two of the most opposite human beings than the maestro Vignelli and John Tornak. I mean, it was just insane how they were coming at it from two different ways. And the question was, could I design a map 
that had the best features of both. And that's what we attempted in the kick map. So the style, the past, again, the maestro, the diagram of 72, and then the topographic map, which has been used for railroads since the late 19th century, you know, overlaying on a street map the route, in this case, 1911. But it goes back, I found maps from the 1870s that did the same thing. Now, when we go to the present, sorry, we're stuck in the past. I mean, here's the Weekender diagram. It's a one-dimensional app. It doesn't change. Uh, when, you, when you zoom in or zoom out, and I'm not even sure if you can zoom in, zoom out on this map, there's no difference in information. It ignores the city for the route, the clear routes. And even the clear routes aren't that clear. I think the Maestro in 72 may have had a clearer system than this. The contortions in lower Manhattan, I kind of get why they're there, but... And then, of course, Google. Now, let's talk about Google for a second, because they're doing, they're back in the 19th century. I mean, it's unbelievable that, um, you know, the, uh, whoever had mentioned the, the map, all New Yorkers know that the avenues go up and down. That's the north and south reality, not the 23 degree angle of the true north. Who cares about true north when you're in New York? New York is the center of the universe. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is this crap? Um, I'm serious. Look at the street, look at the station names, and the station names only appear when you get this close. They're interfering with the street names, and, it's, and then there's advertiser names when you get even closer. So where Google had a great idea of a dynamic, ever-changing, multi-layered map, it's a horrible transit map. So if I did a graph, a business school 101 graph, great system clarity and relevant New York City fabric, I'd have to put a diagram map, and there's a lot of them, but I'd have to put a diagram style map that ignores the city, ignores the fabric, sort of towards the back, towards the left side. And the Google Transit, while it does show fabric of the city, it's not transit, relevant transit related fabric. So we don't want to do any of these things. And the challenge was to come up with a map that had the best system clarity, that made use of the fantastic diagram that the maestro came out with in his 1972 map, but also recognize the essence of the city, its neighborhoods, its parks, the street, the relevant street, not every single street, but the relevant streets that connect with the stations. So that's our solution. It's a hybrid diagram map. Um, the lines are separated by white, so the map, the diagram has to hold rain over the topographic map. We have topographic features. We have, um, there's Tompkins Square Park. We have Tompkins Square Park. <laughs> we, um, we even have, um, you know, and we have Alphabet City, you know, just talking to Mr. Toronek over there, but we have individual lines. And just as important as individual lines, every station in the dot, the most efficient way to show where the state, where the line stops and starts. So the A and C at Chamber Street, you see it clearly. There's no clutter next to the line that you have to look. Um, if I had a criticism of the present map, it's an active map. You have to actively look to see what station, what train stop at what stations. What we're trying for is a very high scannable map, very similar to the Vignelli map, but even faster. And the idea is that there's a number of innovations in here, which I only had 20 minutes, and I was so, uh, I'll talk to you over beer sometime, but basically, we wanted a highly scanned and highly accurate map. Um, there's only, like you, you could see the J and Z in the number one, you only see those symbols, and you only have to see those symbols when the, when the line ends. The J and Z are on every single station where they belong, and we use the MTA's diamond signage, signage for the, um, the rush hour stops. So we have all that. We did that like seven years ago. We also have the, the uh, red dots show the 
where, this, where you can't turn around and go in the opposite direction. We also have Wi-Fi. So it's all subway, there's more subway related data in this map, even in its simple form than the current subway map. It's more accurate um, and it's a hybrid diagram. This is a great quote that I love of Tufty's and that is, clutter is not an attribute of information. Clutter is a failure of design. Fix the design rather than strip out the detail of the map. And that's our guiding force. In other words, we do want our cake and eat it. We do want all those features that we love about New York, as well as a very rapid, rapid transit. Where's that zombie humanoid? <laughs> okay, so here is our diagram without the background to show you how clear and simple it is. We obviously got a lot from the maestro Vignelli in terms of how we conceived the lines. One of the things we did different was we didn't make all the reds the same color. We made them shades of color. So there's actually, there are 26 colors in here, but they're shades of color. And we did that because we also talked to colorblind people and we wanted to make it easier to follow the map if you're just not seeing true color. And of course, when you overlay the, the fabric of New York onto the map, that's what it's all about for us. And then the app. Um, we created this exercise. It got a lot of publicity, but I wasn't about to print maps. But the next year, Apple Computer came out with the iPhone, and my son Dan, who programs for the, for the iPhone, said, Dad, we can make a map. We can make an app map. And that's what we did. So it's more than just a paper map because it's dynamic. When you zoom in and you zoom out, you get more or less information. Automatically at 11 o'clock, the map turns to the night map. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, it turns back to the day map. Um, we have on-map directions. We had it two years before these MTA kiosks had it. And again, here's a very important thing that I have to talk to you about. And that is the subway map is not just a diagram to get you around. It is. But a, a well-done subway map, like the London Tube map, becomes a representation, an icon of the city. It's a point of pride. So because of the Google Maps, maps have been minimized because of the balkanization of all these different kind of maps, the Washington map, the New York map, the London map. People don't use those maps, people don't use the subway maps anymore. If you open up City Mapper, which is one of the most popular transit direction apps, there's a tiny little icon that says, oh, do you wanna see the map? The map has ceased to become the center of most of these, what I call them, aggreg aggregators of transit information. They take the schedule times, they take the local uh, transit map, and they put it together, they fashion it together in a series of lists. We're against that. We like to look at New York, we like to see the directions, the, um, the icon of New York itself. We wanna see where we're going, not just following mindless uh, directions. Go here, take here, go there. The other thing is, which is brilliant that the iPhone introduced is the interface of Google Maps or Apple Maps now, and Street View. So you can press on any station, and up and up uh, up pops a Street View map. And you'll notice on the Street View map is you never lose sight of the fact of the subway map. In other words, it's purposely designed that it hovers over the subway map. You're never lost. You know where to get back immediately. The other thing is we have station entrances, but they're not done. If you saw Apple's station entrances recently, it's, to me, it, it's a mess. It's hard to read. We have little pins that show you exactly where the stations are. We have a built-in compass because often if you're in an unknown destination, you get out, after, out of your stop and just to know, you know north or whatever can be handy. On the back of these, we have as I said, all 26 lines drawn, a responsive zoom and multi-layer maps. There's no internet needed for our directions, unlike Google. Uh, 
Dan's algorithm is brilliant. Uh, the MTA schedule train times and then push notifications if your train's gonna be delayed, come automatically to you through the app. Let's talk about now just the immediate future, what we're working on now. Um, as you know, the, or you may not know, but the kick map is not a bitmap uh, app, it's a vector map. And it's live vector graphics, which means they can change immediately. We're gonna have a change. We change our app about twice every month, at least, minor modification services. And I'm gonna start with the broken elevator at Pelham Bay Park. This has been plastered all over the six line for like three months. But if you go online and you go to the MTA map, they show a wheelchair there as if it's open. And if you go on the weekender, it shows it as it's open. We, the day we found out about that that station was closed, we put a red X through it. So the user is aware that there was an elevator there, but it's not there anymore. And it's gonna be about two or three more months before that elevator is fixed. And to this day, the printed maps that the MTA gives out, as well as their online maps, show it open. The seven line extension, this is just kind of fun, but it, it shows the future. And that is on September 13th, 12 o'clock, when they opened up the seven line, the kick map, if you opened up the kick map then, the seven line appeared. So we, we let people know with a faded little purple line that it was coming up, but, that it, but it wasn't open yet. But then exactly when it opened, we had it. Which brings to the point, if we got better MTA data, real-time MTA data, if the E-line was, uh, was going along the F tracks for whatever reason, we could actually change the map real time. Not blinking lights or any of that stuff, but literally change the route of the F train or the E train. The last thing is we do a lot of these things. Um, New Year's Eve, there were subway stations closed. We had that on the map the day before of stations to avoid. So people could plan, people would know that they um, couldn't take those stations. And the next morning, it was gone, gone. And the coolest thing about vector graphics is we used to have to send all our changes to Apple, it would take a week or two, and then we would be allowed to launch it. Now we could launch it instantaneously, and hopefully in the near future, with hopefully more uh, MTA data, we can even be more responsive. Okay, let's talk about efficiency and paper maps. We believe in the printed map. It's a must. Not everybody has PD, you know, has uh, digital uh, phones or whatever, and you need that discipline of a paper map. The map, the, the small kick map was a map I had the year before the iPhone came out. And I had that, you could see it's all folded. I had it in my wallet. And it has complete transit data on that map. And on the back side of the map, it has the night map, of course. So to talk about 20% smaller, I'm talking about the London map. That's my, my personal collection, that, that Beck map is my one of my personal uh, pride and joys. If New York has tw twice as many stations, we'll have a map twice as big as the Beck map, but that's still one-fifth the size of the current MTA map. Uh, it's just not designed, you know, and I can't blame, you know, it's designed in 1979, whatever. Time has moved on, and we have to move on with it. So we believe in the paper map, but obviously we also believe in the dynamic modern map. Okay, this is the coolest thing I'm gonna show you tonight. We, we had two apps out. We had a paid app that had all the bells and whistles that you saw, but we also had a kick map light, which we gave out one million copies free downloads. One million. <laughs> we, got, we had consistently a five-star rating just on a zoomable, scrollable map. It didn't do anything else. It didn't give you push notifications. It didn't give you anything except clear transit data. 
And all you have to do is go to iTunes and see what people say about that. You know, there's so much information available to us now. Uh, my son was saying the other day, pretty soon they're going to know the temperatures of individual subway cars. And they're going to have an app to know the... And the question is not, is this data important, but how to curate this data to make it relevant to people. And if this app could go against Hopstop and iTrans um, and have five stars, it just shows you the power of a simple map, a simple map. So we're very lucky, we're very proud of that, that we gave away a million of those maps, apps, with, with, with nothing but the subway map. And finally, in three days, <laughs> in three days, we did this last year too, the kick map is going to change to a Halloween map at 11 p.m., the night map, to 6 a.m. It's a full functional map. We, we made fun with, you know, to the Statue of Liberty and whatever, but all the data, all the station names, everything is perfect. Everything works, everything is functional. We did it for Valentine's Day, we did it for St. Patrick's Day, and the point of showing this as my last slide is the map should be fun. In other words, traveling the subway should be fun. It should be a fun experience. A lot of the maps I see when I saw as a child, it was like, oh my God, how do I even deal with this? So that's really it. Uh, thank you.